Welcome back to cbh 4 k and this is Total War Pharaoh's campaign update. Uh, so we're going to look at, we already looked at Battle, which is my previous video. Go ahead and check that out if you get a chance. It should be up on a similar time with this one, so you should, it should be there already. So let me know what you think when you get there. But for right now, we're going to look at the campaign update, and I'm kind of interested in this. I'm not saying it's better or worse than uh, was. I'm not saying battles. I'm not saying campaign is more important. It's just that campaign to me is what makes a total war game total war. If you can't do a good campaign, then it doesn't matter how well the battles are, because the main thing is campaign. Campaign equals replayability in my mind when it comes to a total war game. If the campaign's boring, then nobody's playing it. The big reason why medieval is. St Two is still one of the best Total Wars out there, is because its campaign is excellent. There's a lot of things going on in there. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, another example would probably be Shogun Two's campaign is solid as well because if you play that campaign, you quickly know that things are going to spiral quickly, spiral quickly out of control. Um, and you're going to be fighting this epic war. And you got all these like things you're going to be attend to with the research and city development of your various settlements. And moving your troops around. It's, again, one of the better ones. And so is Rome. Rome has... How do I put this? Rome, well, Rome won. We won't talk about two. I don't, I don't remember playing two that much. Two didn't appeal to me as much as Rome One did, but yeah, uh, Rome One was a solid campaign. They had a lot of things going for it, uh, sp particularly if you picked the Roman faction. The Roman factions had some fascinating, uh, let's just say, water cooler moments there, where you could win entire wars with uh, by saying ambushes or manipulating the political situation for your benefits. Not, not to say that the other factions weren't interesting. They were also interesting as well. Like The Seleucid playthrough is probably one of the best playthroughs in Total War history because it's so chaotic. That's That campaign is so... It's all over the place. You're literally sitting in a spaced out empire that's being hit from all angles it's a delight to play and so sort does of like the total war um barbarians i think it's called yeah where you're invaded by the, the western empire you are invaded you are invaded by various factions throughout that playthrough i, I give it a thumbs up we're not talking about them, we're talking about this. To accommodate the new culture in the upcoming date, we added a new content offering. Immersive experience for players of conquering the ancient world and factions. Okay. Deities! So I guess this is important because religion is an important thing back then. And again, we have the five iconic Greek gods, Zeus. Poseidon, Apollo, Ares, and Aphrodite. In ancient gods, we are thought we reside on many aspects of life and their presence essential to everyday lives. Which was your tradition? Okay. That's nice fluff. Well, but what do you actually... Okay. Here's what we get. Hmm. Shrine dedicated to this guy provides happiness or size. Hmm. The bow general. That's it. Shrine says God prayer at cone. I'll perform in this panel to apply this God's. Okay. We got nice um, bonuses and stuff like that. That's good. Give it different gods. They give it different features. I'll put. I'll put where. Um, 
where the original article is in the description below. Okay? So if you want to read this, you can go ahead and read it right now. But, uh, yeah, I think this... That looks pretty good. Legitimacy. Okay, let's talk about that. Edition. Okay, I'll show them the former shields, the royal court. Features two commanders, a oh hectares, one of these uh, for Mr. Day we introduced a new factor called religion, where reaching new higher favor. Inserted in legitimate points. The king titled the King of the Universe is adorned with a regal, includes a mason, and the court is unique composed of kings. And for example, King Babylon is court. Each king must control their destiny, the city, and has access to their unit yeah, special life. Okay. Ancient legacies. Uh, Mm hmm. Legacies by getting aggressively allows them to crush weaker factions without going through motions of conquering each and every settlement. Through the, okay. It's followed, declare war, then complete objectives against the union factions, such as defeat faction leader, conquer capital, raid resources. Okay, so it lets you like streamline conquering, which. I think it's good. It, th that's more realistic of how that probably would go down. Like, they wouldn't fight you to the last. They would probably fight you to a point where they're like, look, we can't win. And just accept you as their ruler. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Host games, okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of features being added here. You guys should check it out. Saga on the Great. Scribe Warlike, great increase in the chance to get at least one okay. okay. Ambitions, peace and score okay. Win one battle. Ancient legends seem pretty cool. Like, it seems like a checklist of things to do, which I. Those are good. Those are uh, good in a way, but what's great is this the dynasty system, from what I've been looking at it so far. It's probably the best feature they have, and I'm so glad that they, they just they went with this. And that they made it the central part of the update by calling it the dynasty update. The system, is that what they call it? I think that's what they call it. Put in the comments if it's something else. Okay, then this system introduced family trees, providing more depth role-playing system, which allows you to reign over tides of mortality and succession, navigate strategic marriages, heroic deaths on the battlefield, assassinations, and a looming threat of old age to leave behind a legacy that will last for ages. Let's explore what they are and how they look. Okay, wow. Uh, that's good. That brings us back to old school Total War. We needed, we needed that. By the way, I'm still not happy. I still don't see no general speeches until I see those general speeches. You're still gonna be like one notch below <laughs> perfection. All right, characters are now mortal and can be killed in battle in auto resolve. Yeah, that's why I don't like. That's why I don't recommend you use auto resolve too much unless you have an overwhelmingly uh, easy victory. That goes for everyone in the Total War community. They sort of like auto resolve can easily screw you. You lose your best general by mistake. During assassination plots, that's interesting. Here's how that will do. And old age. Yeah. Aging will also be visible with older models and main characters, but wrinkles, gray hair, and other signs of getting older. For those who prefer to continue playing with immortal faction leaders, this option can be turned on or off. I'm turning that on because that adds a level of uh, it adds a level of tension in gameplay. 
that's not there when you don't have that on. If you have a guy that's come back, oh, this is come back. I don't know. The unit's just dead, whatever. But here, uh, there's going to be tension here because I got to keep the guy alive. I got to worry about assassinations. And I got to be pushing forward with him because he's not going to be forever, so. Yeah. That's going to add something. That's going to make it a little bit more special. It, it's what. It's Total War's greatest strength was the dynasty system. I don't know why they got rid of it. And the second greatest strength was the general speeches. I don't. Like, it, the campaigns added so much more than what they're doing. Like, the Total War Warhammer 3, I love it, but. If they had a dynasty system, historical war coming out, I would be super excited for it. And if they added general speeches, and if they added um, traits that come up once you do certain things in battle, like this, this is probably some of the things we've been wanting. Like turns per year, I also like that because I am. Um, in Rome too. You get like, I forgot how long, how long each turn was. How many years in each turn, but it was like Rome 2 was like two years in each turn or something like that. So I never really got into any character that I was working on in there. So I was just like, yeah, I'm not really interested. Yeah. I mean, it was much more fast paced gameplay, so I guess it works there. Ruling family represents the family tree, but to the faction leader. Founding a new dynasty rolls just upon succession and receiving more experience on a campaign to differ from generals or less prestige generals within faction. Let's check it out. Hmm. So these are female characters, and they, they don't really have um, like a character models. They save on character models because they just have like oh female. They boop 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 boop. Then there's children. They count the and until they get to adulthood. Yeah. There's divorce. They can point scion. Okay. Okay. Okay, and there's the succession, uh, receiving more experience on campaign and different, okay. Destiny tree, you know, it's basically the family tree. Also tracks the exploits of supreme rule on the form of deeds. Let's see what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. Battle. Ban oh, that sounds pretty cool. Great things. Diplomacy. Um, adoption in di to dynasty. I can lose by engaging support to faction. themselves. See into a kind of like system and plays out against resources and political marriages, forced inheritance, provides method of to extend family. Like there's a little bit to the strategic there. Shared mechanic update. Okay. 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 You're also adding more content, making several enhancements and modifying to the most of the journey began. These include ambitious character titles, the Conqueror, and all this to support the additional additions. You can hold over the sea people, is evasion now, controlled by campaign. Okay. okay. Okay, so I can take a land now. So, for people who have had that. Pro um, issue with them not being able to be uh, more effective as a threat the sea peoples that has now been added to the game yeah, 
that should work. That should work to make it more of an interesting fight, let's just say. Okay. I think that's pretty good. If you want to see my other video, like I said, you can click on here. And if you want to see this document in full, then I have it in the description. Just click on that there. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll get you the next one.